world's top astrophysicists, Dr. Bergogina was here. She is looked at as a world expert in how the universe works and in exoplanets. She does TED Talks and is well known in astrophysics circles. Out there in the universe. And the Earth is just one of them. In this universe, we are really tiny. We put Earth in the center of the universe. Then the, we realized something wrong with it, so we put the Sun in the center of the universe. Again, it was a little mixed. We put Milky Way in the center of the universe. Not so bad. And we found out in the end that there is no center of the universe. <laughs> Our planet is just a single blue dot among billions of other stars and billions of other planets. We use these plants as prototypes of photos photosynthetic organisms in the universe. And then we build models for alien lives, how they could look. And when we puzzled with this question, how aliens can look like, we actually find answers in the backyard. When we detect life in other planets, we will understand and learn that we are not alone. And we are not special. I wanted to interview her, but how? I thought about it and I created an alias, David Howard from Oxford University Media Society, and created some online material supporting this front. After some well thought out, tricky and delicate emails, I got the appointment, and with the backstory that I was collecting information for young students at Oxford. As I waited in the lobby of this advanced university astrophysics centre, I could see that this was a business with funding, hierarchy, secretaries, etc. Now before we get into the interview, for those new to the channel, know that gravity is just a theory, and my blog in 2015 explained the errors with gravity, and that it can be explained away by density and buoyancy. This blog had over 50,000 views, with not one person debunking it. Also worth knowing is that in 1931, a book called 100 Authors Against Einstein was published in German, and is in the description. This shows a hundred scientists stating Einstein was leading science into pseudo-mysticism, abstraction and speculation. It was crushed by mainstream science. Also know of the Dunning-Kruger effect, a cognitive bias in which experts mistakenly assess their cognitive ability as greater than it is. It's related to the cognitive bias of illusory superiority. And also comes from the inability of people to recognise these experts' lack of ability. Obviously in this interview I couldn't say what I really wanted to early on, as I didn't want her to walk out. I wanted her to cover more subjects and get more answers. So take a seat and buckle up. And this gets more interesting as it continues, and presents a big key, one the truth community has needed for a while. Okay, let's play. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and this doesn't go to unedited somewhere. You will edit this? Yeah, somehow? sure, yeah. sure. You can swear or go to the toilet or whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Sure. Uh, hello, Dr. Bergogina. If hello. You could Hello, if you could just spend one minute or 30 seconds explaining who you are and what you've done. Oh, yeah. So i grown up in Russia. I fell in love with astronomy, first with physics and then with astronomy. And I realized that I want to understand the universe. I cannot live on Earth without knowing what's above my head. I just felt like I need to know. I went to the university studied astrophysics and mathematics, a lot of programming, a lot of programming, a lot of programming, because when we were studying astronomy, we were told that astronomy is not just science by itself, it's very interdisciplinary, so to be an astronomer or astrophysicist, you need to know physics, mathematics, programming, 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 and I must tell right now, so lots of social skills. <laughs> yeah, sure. Great. Uh, I've got a few questions for you, mm -hmm. mainly going to go to uh, teenagers. Mm -hmm. 
they're probably questions you don't hear often or you probably heard when you were a lot younger. The first one I'm going to ask is, it is said that a spinning atmosphere has no border. There's no physical border between spinning atmosphere and the vacuum. And the atmosphere gets less pressured and becomes the vacuum of space. At what altitude would you say that the atmosphere stops spinning? Oh. So gravity, they say, pulls the air molecules to the Earth, mm. but there's still some atmosphere molecules higher up. Yes. At what altitude would you say these atmospheric molecules stop spinning? Well, this is, uh, I would formulate this question that, yes, okay. So the atmosphere spinning and uh, gravitation forces for molecules, these are two kind of different, let's say, forces, yeah? So the spinning allows uh, molecules to escape, actually, at, at certain heights, yeah? Okay. So they can spin and escape at some point. Through, they escape through collisions also. They, there's the additional forces, they, they collide. So they collide the, with each other or yeah, with, with parts other. of the vacuum? With each other. Okay. So, so in order to understand when the atmosphere ends, kind of, yeah, uh, uh, not like having a sharp border, but what we call atmosphere below and no atmosphere above, yeah. actually, there's another term called exosphere. Okay. It's nothing to do with exoplanets. Yeah. It's, it was ter terminology before exoplanets were discovered. It's called exosphere. So that part of the atmosphere, which escapes. So below that, uh, part the atmosphere if it exists it's called atmosphere and it's spinning and, and it's spinning um, and colliding molecules colliding but above they, they already the density is so low that they can escape uh, because they cannot collide they don't collide okay. anymore and what happens to those molecules of atmosphere that would escape into the vacuum of outer space Oh, they go on a cosmic journey. <laughs> okay, and they stop spinning with the Earth. Yes, they don't belong to the Earth anymore. Okay. Yes. Is yeah. there a set altitude distance where that happens? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. It is defined by uh, density of the atmosphere, the gravity of the, of the planet. But for the Earth, I have to look up. If you want me to look up, I'll look up. No, that's I, fine. I don't know that number. That's I know that the density uh, falls off exponentially. Yeah. So I actually cannot say. I mean, we we tell that the space starts approximately, uh, uh, let's say, uh, at 100 kilometers, about 130, 130 kilometers, something like this, something like this, something like this, that you can go on the orbit. Uh, I mean, this spinning means like you, uh, the body spinning around the Earth means that it's orbiting the Earth, yeah? Okay. So even if we put a satellite at 200 kilometers, it's still orbiting the uh, Earth, even though it is not in the atmosphere. So we put satellites at thousands of kilometers above, and they're still spinning around the they're Earth. They're still in low Earth orbit yes. in this model. They're still on the orbit. They're still spinning around. Would they still be colliding with molecules of the atmosphere? Yes, they will. If, if there are yeah, okay. at that height, yes. Okay, great. So everything is spinning around, all, all the also, uh, space junk, what we call, yeah, yeah. all this... Uh, yeah, I've got a question uh, on that later. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so everything is spinning, in my terminology it's orbiting, astronomy uh, terminology, it's really orbiting the Earth at very large distances. Moon, 400,000 kilometers, is still orbiting the Earth. And this would also collide with escaped atmospheric yes. molecules from and the Earth? Yes, and it also collides with the escaped molecules, and not molecules in this case, but more like particles and atoms from, from the Sun, okay. which is called solar wind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It so is... it's like hard to, I mean, the atmosphere definition is that, okay, when the molecules can escape, the atmosphere ends. Yeah. You have to look up this number, yeah, yeah. for the Earth. I don't but know. it's kind of arbitrary and it's kind of hazy. Yeah, exactly. It's just escaping. But this escape, it's still, they can go on an orbit. Yeah. It doesn't mean that escape means that they cannot fall on Earth anymore because the molecules go like this. Like they collide and they go up and down all the time, yeah? So it's, a, it's like turbulence, what we call. And the reason... In mainstream astrophysics, in astrophysics, that the vacuum doesn't suck out the gas is because the gravity is holding yeah. the gas to the earth. Yeah, exactly. Because everywhere else in science, when there's a vacuum and gas, it equilibrates. Yes. If you just take without gravity, yes, then they start to mix. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Our survey said...